As a final topic of today, I now want to talk a little bit about high dimensional statistics. So um, high dimensional statistics really deals with the case where I have potentially very few observations, but uh, many, many predictors there. This makes that my kind of my data table X, um, my model matrix X is rather wide. In the usual cases, it will be more uh, likely to be of this form here, where I have few predictors, uh, P, and many, many observations. That makes it usually easy to fit a model. But you can have this other type of data, and this is what is sometimes called the high dimensional statistics. A kind of typical example would be uh, gene expression. There are sometimes are hundreds of thousands of gene markers, but I might only have a hundred patients and then I have a data frame which is like this. The problem is that uh, even, even linear regression uh, in its simplest form has some issues with it. So we saw linear regression is something very uh, simple and easy, but it's actually not defined for this type of data. And that's where regularization comes in. So regularization previously looked like something a bit optional, so we want to regularize the complexity. This is why we why we introduce the regularization. But we could also just have looked at the model without regularization. It, it, it would have been a bit uh, more complex, but it would have still existed. No, but here uh, we can actually see that without regularization, this problem will not be well defined. And uh, to really understand it, you have to see a little bit of the mathematics. But what you can actually see that this matrix x transpose x in the case where n is less than p it will be uh, singular so this matrix is called a singular uh, matrix so x transpose x will be singular and i can't invert a singular matrix it will basically give me infinity uh, one way of seeing it but again this is maybe going a bit too much but for those interested, imagine I just call it matrix M, then I know that there exists something uh, which is called a spectral decomposition, uh, which is also related to, to, to eigenvalues and eigenvectors, where I can basically write my matrix M as the sum over all the eigenvalues uh, times Xi, Xi transpose, which would be the projector on the, uh, on the eigen space or let's just call it v because we called it v yesterday so v are the eigenvectors lambda are the eigenvalues but having that i can just simply write the inverse of the matrix as the sum over i lambda i minus one times the projector so it's just the inverse of the eigenvalues times the projector on the eigenspace uh, but now because i have this singular matrix which has this sections of zeros in it there will be whole blocks basically of the matrix which will be filled with zeros and that effectively means that i will have zero eigenvalues and then if i do this inverse i will get one over zero there now this thing here is a little side comment for those of you who kind of like the math like those description maybe know very well about eigenvalues and spectral decomposition this comment might be something quite useful to kind of connect the dots but if you if you have never heard about spectral decomposition just forget about it it's, it's not such a relevant thing i just wanted to kind of highlight as i thought it might be interesting for some of you but going back so because x transpose x becomes singular it is not invertible uh, when now n becomes less than p so for high dimensional statistics i can't anymore um, solve the problem without any other regularization and here is where a uh, kind of um, regularization comes to the rescue and we can look at it a little bit on the board so let's just recall that when we were doing um, linear regression when we just do normal linear regression we want to find the minimum if we write it in vector notation of something like y minus x a transpose y minus x both y, y minus x a that's just the least squares error uh, which is the same as the sum over i over uh, y i minus um, minus 
f of x i basically exactly as we've written this before but now in vector notation which makes it a little bit easier so we want to minimize this thing over over a and the solution is the one we see here i mean the solution we calculated uh, like on day one we calculated the solution is this but we see that the problem here arises with this matrix uh, x transpose x where we don't have an inverse anymore and i mentioned to you already um we can solve it by adding a regularizer so let's just see what what happens if we add a regularizer here and we add the l2 regularizer because as we already know from the loss function having something squared is easier than absolute values which we don't like really so let's just add plus lambda and now the regularizer in vector notation would just be a transpose a a transpose a is the same as the sum over i a i a i which is just a i squared so this is just the same term as we had before and now we know that to solve this analytically what we did last time we differentiated with respect to a the whole thing And then we set it equal to zero, okay? And now if we do it as before, I mean, you know, that if we multiply this by this will be a constant, then this by this will give us minus x transpose y, then I will get the same term if, uh, if um, this y multiplies this one, so another uh, minus y transpose x, and then I obviously have the, uh, the quadratic term here, this will be plus, and then I have um, 2x transpose x times a. So it's a squared, so 1a left. And then for the second term, this quadratic, so we just get 2 lambda a here. And this is equal to 0. Now obviously this is twice, so I can divide through by a factor of 2. Uh, bring it to the other side, so effectively I have... Um, x transpose x plus lambda, I will just put a one matrix here, times a is equal to x transpose y, and now I take the inverse as before, so we get the solution here, a is equal to x transpose x plus lambda 1, identity matrix, inverse, times x transpose y. And kind of this is the solution uh, we get and interestingly it looks very similar as before if you go back uh, exactly the same only that in the brackets I have now a 1 plus lambda i but but this is quite nice because now actually um, I will kind of get a, I will regularize the matrix and that's why sometimes called regularizer because now I'm 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 solving the issues because before I had this problem where what I said, the eigenvalues here are zero, and now I get one over zero, but now my eigenvalues will effectively be shifted. I will have uh, lambda i, the eigenvalue will just go to lambda i plus regularizer times one here. So I will kind of shift my eigenvalues slightly away from zero. So even if, if lambda i is zero, the new lambda i will just be, if the old lambda i was zero, the new lambda i will still be lambda here. This is why it's not zero anymore. It's basically solves the issue by dividing by zero. You can see of it, if you look at the picture, so the problem before was that I had some matrix, which was somehow, um, it was non-zero here. So this matrix is this matrix kind of x transpose x. It was um, non-zero here, but it was zero everywhere else uh, because of the issue with the um, kind of n being much less than p. But when I add this regularizer here, if I add um, plus lambda 1 to it, I would effectively just add a small term to the diagonal here, on the diagonal of the matrix, I will just add something non-zero, but always through. So now this block 
will effectively be non-zero. So down here, I before had this issue where there were, it was just zero, and this is why I couldn't invert the matrix anymore. But now I'll have something non-zero on the diagonal, and this solves the issue basically of inverting the matrix. So this is kind of in pictures, uh, if, if, if that helps you to understand it a bit better. So we will see that if we have high dimension statistics, I cannot even do standard linear regression anymore, just because this uh, x transpose x is not invertible anymore. But once I add this extra term, uh, once I add the regularization term, I will get this extra term in, in this matrix which has to be inverted, which actually makes it invertible and this solves the problem there. And this is how kind of regularization comes to the rescue in high dimensional statistics. And, and this is basically just to summarize what I just said. So if we had the, the standard linear regression problem, I would have the issue of uh, a singular matrix, but if I add this regularization term, then my analytical solution changes, gets this additional term here, and this makes, uh, uh, this helps me to, to now be able to invert this matrix. So the kind of previously singular matrix x transpose x now becomes uh, um, non-singular and I can invert it. And, and this is how um, regularization really helps um, high dimensional problems. You can think of it a little bit like this, like often I would say I'm at the risk of overfitting when I have very complex models, but you can think of it like if I have so few observations and so many predictors, then even a linear model is overfitting, you see? So what you really want is you want to kind of turn or some of these coefficients to zero or make them small in this case for which regression to make the problem less dimensional. And, and, and this is actually not optional. It's not that we want to do it, but we actually have to do it to make the problem well defined. And, and that's really all I wanted to say about high dimensional statistics.